It's still early days here in our realistic takeover rebuild with Everton, but already we have our work cut out for us. Just one season into their tenure as new owners, 777 partners have already set their sights on European football. And we've got a long way to go to achieve that, having finished in 12th place in the Premier League last season. New manager Graham Potter has added three first team players to his squad to try and make that happen. Lewis Ferguson arriving from Bologna for 23 million. Joachim Anderson arriving from relegated Crystal Palace for 20 million and Asan Diaw arriving for 19 million from Real Betis. But it's going to be a tall task to get anything out of our opening game here in season two as the fixture list has us heading down to the Emirates to face Arsenal. We did manage to run out 4-3 winners in a seven goal thriller when we played Arsenal in the last episode of season one. But Arsenal will have Unai Simon between the sticks today so I'm not going to count on putting four past them again. If you're new to the channel we always feature one game which we play in full and that will be the Arsenal game. However we will also be getting two highlights of our opening home game against Tottenham Hotspur and our Carabao Cup fixture at home against Fleetwood Town. All three of Graham Potter's new permanent signings do feature in the starting 11. Players Player of the Year Jordan Pickford captains the side in goal. Most improved player from season one Nathan Patterson starts at right wing back whilst Maxim de Kuyper starts at left wing back. Managers player of the season Arnel Armadogic plays alongside Joachim Anderson and Jared Branthwaite in a back three. Lewis Ferguson is hopefully going to provide that creative spark that we've been looking for in centre midfield alongside Amadou Onana. 18 year old Asan Diao starts on the right hand side which allows Reese Nelson to switch back over to the left where he caused such a problem for defences at the beginning of last season. And goal of the season winner Beto continues up front. As for Arsenal, they do play Unai Simon in goal, but they have something of a makeshift back four. Ben White starts at right back, but Kivior starts at centre back alongside Urien Timber. Nuno Tavares starting at left back. Declan Rice, Sambi Laconga and Jorginho, the captains, start in midfield whilst Gabriel Martinelli and Bakayo Saka support Gabriel Jesus up front. And there are places only on the bench for Martin Erdegaard, William Saliba, Kai Havertz and Kieran Tierney. So preseason potentially taking its toll on Arsenal and will look to take advantage of that here today. But without further ado, let's head over to the Emirates and see if we can come away with all three points here on opening day of the Premier League season. So we are up in the commentary booth again here at the Emirates. It feels like deja vu. Another match up against Arsenal. It's the way we ended season one. But it's the way that we begin season two here in Graham Potter's second year at Everton. It's a tough draw, to be honest. Arsenal away on the opening day. And it's going to take everything that we have to come away with a, uh, a result you would imagine we are adopting a slightly tailored game plan today I would say we have immediately dropped into our defensive game plan and I imagine we will be sitting in that for the majority of the game if not the entirety of the game we will be looking to hold on to the ball where we can but it's probably going to be Quick counter-attacks against Arsenal's high press that are going to be the way that we uh, will threaten Arsenal today. Arsenal are pressing particularly aggressive at the moment and in these instances we are happy just to keep the ball. And as I say that, we play a terrible pass looking for the feet of Lewis Ferguson but finding only an Arsenal shirt and Arsenal come away with it. It's a good challenge by Joachim Anderson and already Arsenal... And not only into the box, but have fired the ball past Sean Pickford into the back of the net. Absolutely disastrous start away from home. And I'm so sick of seeing that celebration. Every single goal that anybody ever scores, they run over and celebrate with their manager. But a disastrous start at the Emirates. We kept the ball for about the first five minutes. Played it straight to the feet of an Arsenal player. And they score on their first attack. Awful, awful start to the game. We were all over the place there defensively. 
Okay, Anderson putting a good challenge initially, but he was way out of position. Not sure what Armadojic was doing in the position that he found himself in either. Manager's player of the season last year, but he's not going to stay in Graham Potter's good books for too much longer if he continues to play like that. And this is the downside of the game plan that we have approached this game with. If we do find ourselves a goal down early, that entire game plan goes out of the window because as you saw there, we had the ball on the left-hand side. Three Arsenal players surrounded the ball carrier and there was nobody forward in support because we are set up so defensively. So we are already under the cosh, already behind the eight ball here in our opening game of the season. And Arsenal again into the box. A good intervention by Amadou Onana. And he does well just to win an Everton throw deep in our own territory. But it is going to be Everton possession at least. Maxim de Kuyper, Reese Nelson worked out well into the feet of Amadou Onana. We do have players over if we can find them. Amadojic. Arsenal pressing even higher now that they are a goal up. Into the feet of Jordan Pickford and Reese Nelson is in space. If we can get the ball to him, Beto wins the header. And Reese Nelson is away on this left hand side. There's Beto once more. Can he get into the Arsenal box and fire a shot at goal? Yes, he can, and what a finish! Beto with his left foot across you and I see one. And we have picked up exactly where we left off from last season. It was a seven goal thriller in the last episode of season one. And within 15 minutes, there are two goals in this game. I didn't think Beto was going to score from there, but what a finish. An absolute laser across the face of goal. And to be fair, that was the game plan in practice. It was a long ball from Pickford up to Beto who nodded it down to Reese Nelson. Reese Nelson found Beto again. And the next touch that Beto made was to fire it into the back of the net. And it's 1 1. Good intervention. Nathan Patterson and Dial can come away with it on the right hand side. The control not close enough to prevent it from going out for an Arsenal throw now, which Tavares will take. Dial looks to be a really exciting young player. We had a few different options of players to sign in that forward position. Some more experienced than others. And Diaw is the least, of, uh, least experienced of all of the options that we were looking at. I was very tempted to go for somebody with a lot more experience, like a Morgan Gibbs-White. More of a veteran Premier League player. But I figure Nottingham Forest finished only, I think, four places below us last season. And Diaw is into the box now, lays it off for Onana who can't quite get there. Onana of course had interest from Arsenal a couple of seasons back in real life. He hasn't had any interest from Arsenal here in this save. He hasn't had surprisingly interest from anyone in this entire summer transfer window so far. We haven't received an offer for Amadou Onana. And we haven't really received Good save, Jordan Pickford. We're just going to have to get rid here. Nathan Patterson wins a goal kick. We haven't really received bids for anybody as we see Beto's goal again. Worth looking at it again. Fantastic finish. But Diaw, as I said, our choice in that additional forward role. Morgan Gibbs-White would have been a, a good addition to the side, but... Don't think Nottingham Forest really would have been willing to sell. We're pretty much on a level with Nottingham Forest in terms of club status at the moment, I would say. Maybe ever so slightly above them. Diaw. Diaw, I thought, showed the most promise out of any of the options that we looked at. And that's why he's now an Everton player. Was the most expensive option at 19 million. Lewis Ferguson, I thought, had drifted into an offside position there, but he hasn't. There's Diaw again, causing issues for Arsenal. Amadou Onana, Beto with the ball at his feet. Can he find Diaw once more? He has. And Diaw can't quite get the cross in before he's dispossessed. 
He'll chase this ball down, though. But Arsenal work it free to Saka on their right-hand side. Oh, Onana almost stole the, stole the ball away there. Lewis Ferguson's been relatively anonymous so far. He was another player who's pretty excited about signing. High, high work rates in centre midfield. I did want a more creative option. And we're going to have to be careful not to concede. Not just a goal, but a clear opportunity here. And Jared Branthwaite's done really well to cut that out. Does relinquish possession immediately after winning it back. And he's done really well to block again the cross there of Bukayo Saka. Shepard and Saka out towards the corner flag. Oh, and it's well worked by Arsenal. Really intricate play. And eventually crossed in where Joachim Anderson can head clear. And Beto again potentially is going to set us on our way. Diaw. He's got pace about him, Diaw. And he's got enough to squeeze past Tavares. Has he got enough to get into the box before he's closed down? And Diaw scores now. Again, I didn't expect anything from the shot when we took it. I thought just fire across the face of goal and potentially Simon will parry it into a dangerous position. But instead, Diaw fires it like Beto did across the goalkeeper and into the top corner. It was his pace as well as his strength that allowed him to get in position to score. And I thought surely there was either going to be a block on that. It was, I think, Yuri and Timber. It was Timber. Shepherding Diaw. As he took the shot. And Unai Simon, who I thought was going to be really difficult to beat today, has let his side down there. As he concedes a second goal. It's basically a mirror image of Beto's finish and Unai Simon hasn't been able to get to either of them and suddenly we find ourselves 2-1 up here at the Emirates extremely unexpected not least because we went 1-0 down within five minutes of the game what to do now the game plan didn't really plan for this to be honest Armour Dodgic gives the ball away horrendously. That's terrible, terrible play, Armour Dodgic. He does recover and make up for his mistake. And Nathan Patterson just fires it against the Arsenal man. Beto can't quite collect. I thought there was a hand in there from Arsenal. Referee played advantage where really there was none. I would much have preferred the free kick. Good challenge, Jared Branthwaite. And Reese Nelson will come away with it. There's nowhere to run but into Arsenal bodies. Somehow Lewis Ferguson has managed to find himself with the ball at his feet. And all we can do is run down into these sorts of areas. There wasn't really a cross on there. Lewis Ferguson continues to hold on to the ball. There's Amadou Onana. Now tries to fire across and there's a penalty ref. Amadou Onana goes down under the challenge from the Arsenal defender. He gets straight back up to be fair to him. Not much of a protest from Onana or from any other Everton players. Nor even from the fans in the stands. So I guess that must have been a fair challenge. It looked like we had a shout at least there. Just get rid. Amadogic just needs to play a bit more sensibly. He's had a really shaky start to his season and to this game. And we've got about five minutes to go until half-time. And we could well find ourselves 2-1 up if we defend well here in the closing stages of the first half. And that's exactly what Nathan Patterson has done there. And he's just lofted the ball up to Diaw. Just cuts inside this time. Finds Lewis Ferguson, who could be away. He's got Declan Rice for company. He's got more pace than Declan Rice, though. And Ferguson now is into the box. Declan Rice does well to track him back. And steal the ball away, though. Beto. Onana. Beto just gives it away. Doesn't put enough on it. Onana's in the right position. Beto failed in his execution, though. Should have done better there, the big man. And Onana just bundles over. I think perhaps that's Jorginho. Martinelli away on the left-hand side in a position to cross. Declines to do so. Dial back in a defensive position. Arsenal again working it into the box and Armadogic just puts it out of play. I don't mind that. 
Better safe than sorry in that situation. And here's Giao's goal. Simon really should have done better with that one. Beto's was at least right in the, in the far corner. That one looked to be much, much closer to Simon. Good header, Maxim de Kuyper. It goes down awkwardly after he heads the ball clear. Good challenge, Onana, and now an Arsenal player goes down in the box. And the referee again says nothing doing. And we managed to hook the ball clear. And we're about 20 seconds away from the half-time whistle. And there it is. So it's going to be a 2-1 Everton lead here at half-time. A frantic, frantic first half. And I'm not sure what to make of it, really. And I'm not sure how to approach the second half. We went a goal down within five minutes, but enacted our game plan to perfection to grab two goals. Defending well and then launching a quick counter-attack against Arsenal. I think that's the way we're going to have to approach the second half as well. So we are back out for the second half here at the Emirates. Trying to essentially repeat what we did in the first half there with the slight modification to the game plan of trying to keep possession a little better. We want to try and limit the chances that Arsenal have here in this second half. And we are going to have to be very, very careful because Arsenal are going to press high and aggressively. And that's exactly what they've done there. We're really going to struggle to keep possession. But I think we do have to try and do that as much as we can. Good save, Jordan Pickford. It's a strike on goal from range by Sambi Lukonga. Jordan Pickford equal to it. And Martinelli will put the corner in. Or he'll play it short to Saka. But not before Sambi Lukonga comes off. And our afternoon just got even harder. Martin Erdegaard coming on to replace the more defensive midfielder. And Martinelli does go short to Saka. Returns the ball to Martinelli. Patterson with a really good challenge. And Reese Nelson just comes away with it on the left-hand side. Saka coming across now. But Reese Nelson just chooses to keep the ball through Anderson. Branthwaite on this right-hand side. And there's Nathan Patterson. Tries to find Beto, but again, we've given the ball away. I think we have to try and keep the ball, but I think we are going to struggle to do so. I don't just want to lump it clear every time we get it, though. It's just going to invite Arsenal pressure. And the Arsenal pressure is going to pay off before too long, you would imagine. The more chances we give them, obviously, the more chance they have of putting one in the back of the net. But they're just all over us. There's nobody to release the ball to. And Arva Dodgic just puts it out of play. They're marking so tightly and so high up the field. Just man to man in our half at the moment. Erdegaard. Arma Dodgic and De Kuyper both out there. De Kuyper getting his foot on the ball and Saka's lunged in trying to win the ball back. And he's earned himself a yellow card for his challenge. It wasn't a great one. And he's bailed us out a little bit there. De Kuyper, really classy challenge. Stealing the ball away from Saka. And again, Onana giving the ball away in midfield. That's too easy. That's far too easy. I said we're going to struggle to keep the ball, but we have to make Arsenal work harder than that. De Kuyper. Reese Nelson. Big switch of players on if he can find Patterson, which he has. Really good pass from Reese Nelson. There's Arma Dodic, and we'll just work it across the back three if we can. There's Branthwaite. There's De Kuyper once more. Reese Nelson making a good run, but it's just taken Arsenal bodies away from Jared Branthwaite. Anderson once more. There's Onana. Lucky deflection. Off an Arsenal man finds to Kuiper's feet. And this is better. Doing a better job of keeping the ball here. And I think we just need to try and do that for as long as possible. And that's exactly what Anderson has not done there. Arma Dodgic coming across. Ferguson working back as well. Into Onana's feet now. And 
almost managed to release to Kuiper on the left-hand side there. But Arsenal so quick to put in the challenge. Onana doing well to come across and cut that out though. And again, Reese Nelson can come away. And this is the advantage of our game plan. Arsenal committing bodies forward. Reese Nelson's going to have a pop across goal now. And that one's going to go out for a throw in. He saw Beto do it first. He saw Diaw do it shortly after. He's had his own attempt there, Reese Nelson. And it certainly hasn't ended in the same way. Leandro Trossard coming on for Arsenal now. He was a player I've had my eye on in terms of an additional forward option, but Arsenal not willing to loan him out to us. And he's too expensive for us to, to buy, really. He's not a player I wanted to commit to on a permanent basis, but I certainly would have taken him on loan for the season. And I think it's almost time for us to make a couple of changes of our own. Probably got some relatively tired legs out there at this stage. And I'm thinking Lewis Ferguson off for James Garner potentially in the centre of midfield there. Good challenge, Maxim De Kuyper, and he manages to keep the ball in play. And he manages, I was going to say to find Reese Nelson, but not quite. And the ball does still remain in play for Arsenal. I thought that had gone over the line there for an Everton throw. It's gone out for a throw this time, but for Arsenal. And they found Bukayo Saka. He just drives across goal. Doing well to limit his options at the moment. Erdegaard on the ball, though. Ja uh, Jared Branthwaite for company, and he puts in a fantastic challenge. Reese Nelson up towards Beto. It's a hopeful pass. And Ben White deals with it comfortably. We're approaching the 70 minute mark in the game though. The second half has gone fairly quickly and we've managed to hold Arsenal to very, very few chances. Good challenge, Amadou Onana. Referee waves play on. I didn't even see a foul in there. And the linesman's seen a foul, but again, the referee playing advantage. And they're doing a really good job of just getting bodies back. And in the way, really. But managing to win the ball back at the moment, but we are managing at least to slow Arsenal down and again Beto with a good run Reese Nelson trying to find him and he may well have done that this time and again Arsenal deal with it just about not quite as comfortable as the previous one but Urien Timber comes across to deal with it and Jesus could be away here Anderson for company Jesus has got the beating of him for pace but not for strength Onana Finds the feet of Beto. Diaw through the middle. And Ferguson's found him. And Diaw again could have the pace here. He's going to have to strike across goal. And instead he puts it in the near post. And Simon finally makes a save. That could have been three in the game. Lewis Ferguson did really well to set Diaw away. And again that pace and that strength was enough to get him into the Arsenal box. But he couldn't quite find the finish that time. It's going to be an Everton corner. We are going to make a couple of changes here before we take it. So two changes for Graham Potter. Amadou Onana, despite the booking, does remain on the field. It's going to be Lewis Ferguson and Nathan Patterson instead to leave the field. James Garner and James Justin coming on to replace them. James Garner, the man who's just entered, will take the corner. Aiming for Beto, finds him. Beto nods towards goal. And I thought it took a deflection there and out for a second corner, but instead it's going to be an Arsenal goal kick. And Asan Diaw already is proving, as we can see here, that he is worth every penny of those £19 million that we spent on him. He scored in our final pre-season game in the last episode as well. And at the moment, he has the winner against Arsenal at the Emirates. Whether it remains that way is yet to be determined. But as it stands, 18-year-old Asan Diaw... Could be a game winner in his official debut for the club. Arsenal still have time to do something about that, though. And, of course, they're going to try their hardest to do so. Jordan Pickford, again, there's space on the left-hand side. This fine time for De Kuyper. Really strong play to hold off Saka, and somehow Saka is back to his feet before De Kuyper is able to come away with the ball. 
And De Kuyper this time will just clear. I think it's going to be more and more of that here in this second half as we approach the 80 minute mark. Just getting rid of the ball. Trying to clear the danger. Get the ball up the field. Good challenge. And James Garner can drive away this time. And we've got players over on this left-hand side. And Beto has found one of them. And it's Reese Nelson against his former club. Can he cut inside? Yes, he can. Maxim De Kuyper with a run outside. Onana with a run inside. Reese Nelson just holds on to it. And he's twisted and turning, trying to find an option. But Arsenal were taking them all away. Eventually, he finds Beto. Who lays it off for Onana in space. Onana with a drive across goal. And it's blocked. And Dial brings it down. Again, trying to find space to cross. Get out of the way, James Justin. And we're just driving back towards our own goal. Onana being hustled and harried. And he just has to go all the way back to Jordan Pickford. Look at that line of about six Arsenal players. They look like Olympic sprinters just all lined up on the halfway line. And as soon as Onana played that pass back to Jordan Pickford they were away about 10 minutes to go you would think stoppage time included there can't be much added time to come good block Maxim De Kuyper we need to get there again though and Maxim De Kuyper has got there again fantastic defending from the young defender Reese Nelson in a bit of space on the left hand side we have players to try and find with forward runs there. I thought it made more sense to just make sure and hold on to the ball. Jared Branthwaite versus Leandro Trossard on the right-hand side for Arsenal. We need to come across James Garner. Bukayo Saka. Good challenge. And Diaw. Again, space to run into. So many Arsenal bodies committing themselves to the attack. Diaw cuts inside. Slip through to Beto. With a chance to put the game to bed and he puts it wide. Our top goal scorer from last season. Had a chance to put the game to bed once and for all. There were two minutes to go and he puts it wide. Really good play from Diaw. And I really hope we don't come to rue that missed opportunity. It's going to be a triple substitution with two minutes left on the clock. Amadou Onana, the man with the booking, is coming off alongside Beto and Reese Nelson. Chimiti has come on up front to replace Beto. Abdullah Decore is on in midfield. And Jack Harrison takes his place on the left-hand side in Reese Nelson's stead. The 18-year-old Asan Diaw still on the field. He's been absolutely electric today. And he still has extremely fresh legs. Well, when compared... To the likes of Reese Nelson and Amadou Diana, um, Amadou Onana, anyway, and that's exactly what we need in these last three minutes of added time. Good block, James Justin. Two minutes of added time now. All we need is fresh legs, just to see this game out. Good header. I think that was Joaquim Anderson in there. Good block from Chimiti. Can he win the ball back? No, he can't. And it's a fantastic save from Jordan Pickford diving away to his left hand side. And Beto had a chance to win us the game. Jordan Pickford might have just done that. Martinelli it was. With the curling shot. Pickford equal to it. And Unai Simon is up. All 11 players in the box for Arsenal. And they aim for Bukayo Saka. The chance still not gone. What a block! And he is the side netting. Blocked by Jared Branthwaite. And almost an own goal by the young Everton defender. Jordan Pickford had dived away to his left again. He would have been absolutely helpless there if it was on target. But thankfully, it ripples the side netting and James Justin with a chance to head away this time. To Corre, knocked it upfield. And there is the referee's final whistle. And it is a statement victory in our opening game of the season. We finished last season with a 4-3 victory over Arsenal. We've opened this season with a 2-1 victory. And the Emirates is starting to feel like home for Graham Potter and this young Everton side. Asan Diaw with the winner. The 18-year-old arriving for 19 million from Real Betis. 
with high hopes and a lot of expectations. And he has delivered here on the opening day of the season against Arsenal. Scoring the goal that sends us away. 2-1 winners. So I doubt that was the result that many people were expecting when they tuned into the game. It certainly wasn't the result that I was expecting when we jumped into it. But a really, really good performance away from home. A shaky first five minutes and a shaky first half, really. All things being told, but we set out with a game plan and we executed that game plan to perfection and although we're approaching the end of the summer transfer window we are still yet to receive any substantial offers for any of our players an offer coming in for Abdullah Decore from Cadiz but nothing beyond that so that does bring us straight to the highlights of our next game versus Tottenham Hotspur Spurs have also been relatively active in the transfer market selling Destiny Udogi to Real Sociedad for a little short of 47 million. They replaced him with Jose Gaia from Valencia. And they brought in Yao Neves from Benfica for a little more than 43 million. Yao Neves does start in midfield alongside Tangi and Dombele, but it's Ryan Sessignon who starts at left back alongside Van de Ven. Ben Davis and Jed Spence, a player that we were interested in for a short time. Richarlison and Kulusevski lead the attack for Tottenham, but again, it's a pretty stacked bench with Huming Son, Vicario, Romero, Pedro Porro, even Eve Basuma, all on the bench for Tottenham today. As for Graham Potter's 11, James Tarkovsky comes into the back five in place of Arnel Armadogic, who had a shaky opening game against Arsenal. Abdullah Decore comes into midfield. And it's the same starting three up front with Reese Nelson and Asan Diaw supporting Beto. And this was a game that really showed the golfing class between us and clubs like Tottenham. Despite resting multiple members of their starting 11, they absolutely dominated us at Goodison Park. Forcing numerous saves from Jordan Pickford like this one. And it didn't take Tottenham long to break the deadlock. Richarlison, the ex-Everton man, found himself with the ball at his feet inside the penalty area. And he fired a shot at Jordan Pickford's near post that had far too much pace on it. For him to do anything about it and we didn't have many chances in the game but the ones that we did have really fell to Beto and they were fairly clear-cut opportunities this one Beto fired wide from the edge of the box and Joachim Anderson then went down holding his knee and he didn't get back up eventually the physicians had to be called on and Anderson had to be stretched off I'm really hoping this isn't another torn ACL it really was all Tottenham though Jordan Pickford being called upon multiple times first here from Richarlison and then later being forced to parry away the shot of Tangi and Dombele but Tottenham did manage to double their lead after halftime Kulusevski causing issues down the right hand side we went to sleep a little bit in the box Jared Branthwaite and James Tarkovsky each allowing Richarlison to get another shot off in the box and he doubled his tally as well as Tottenham's so we really just didn't have enough to match Tottenham today they were really good in possession they created numerous opportunities and they limited us to just one or two really clear-cut chances that Beto failed to take so after a really positive start to the season against Arsenal it's a disappointing way to continue with that loss against Tottenham and it does also seem as if we are going to lose Anderson for seven months due to a torn ACL. So our day goes from bad to worse. And we do have confirmation that Joachim Anderson is going to be out for seven months. So he's likely to miss, if not the entire season, then the vast majority of it, having played only one game for his new club. But not only that, we also have a transfer offer for Beto waiting for us in our inbox as well. His performance last season, earning him interest from Aston Villa with a bid of a little over 20 million and having put Beto's details into Buzzco's realistic transfer calculator it's come back with the verdict that we must accept Aston Villa's offer the main reasons for that is that Aston Villa are deemed a bigger club not only because of their 81 overall but the fact that they did make it into the Europa League this season so Beto would be playing European football for Villa in addition to that this is going to be Beto's third season at the club we are allowed to safeguard players for up to two seasons but because we are entering Beto's third season he is no longer protected by that safeguard we don't have to accept the Aston Villa offer as it stands though we can negotiate with them and we can bargain them up to a fee of a little less than 30 million pounds. Ollie Watkins, of course, completed a move to Atletico Madrid earlier in the save. So Aston Villa searching for their Ollie Watkins replacement and they think that they have found it in Beto. And we do go back to Aston Villa and Unai Emery and negotiate and we end up agreeing on a fee of 27 and a half million for Beto. So it was not the transfer that I anticipated taking place here as we approach the deadline of this summer window if anybody was going to leave I thought maybe it would be Amadou Onana 
Beyond that, Jared Branthwaite, I thought might be the target of some transfer offers, but we have received zero offers for either of those players. And it's the big man, the star striker, the talisman up front from last season, Beto, who ends up departing. So what on earth do we do now? We have made a commitment to Beto. We've kept him in the squad. We've even tweaked our system around him. And now all we have left of you is Yusuf Chamiti. We do now have a little short of 50 million sitting in the bank to spend though. So we are going to be able to replace Beto this summer window if we can squeeze in a deal before the deadline. So we've got a real decision to make and I'm going to need your help to make it. Do we finally take this opportunity to switch to more of a false nine up front and go with somebody like Demirovic or even Trossard who we played against in that first game against Arsenal to replace Beto? Or do we try and replace Beto like for like with another similar player? Leave your suggestions in the comments below, not only with which approach we should take, but of course with suggestions about who you think we should target. But now though, our youngsters have a chance to impress as they take on Fleetwood Town at home in the Carabao Cup. So Yusuf Chimiti gets his first chance to show he can replace Beto as he starts up front. Lewis Dobbin and Jack Harrison start just behind him. James Garner starts alongside Josh De Silva as he makes his full debut for Everton. And with Noah and Bamba out on loan, we don't have a great deal of youth along the back line. So he should be fairly robust defensively with several senior players making the start. And it was a bright start from Fleetwood Town, forcing a corner and then forcing this save out of Shao Virginia. But the performance was pretty much as routine as you would expect. And on the ninth minute, James Garner opened the scoring with this effort. It was a shot from range that the goalkeeper should have done much, much better with. It was almost straight at him, but he just flailed at the ball and it ended up in the back of the net. Yusuf Chemiti got on the score sheet a short while later. Jack Harrison making a nuisance of himself in the box, forcing a mistake from the Fleetwood Town defender. And Yusuf Chimiti fired home from the penalty spot. We did allow Fleetwood Town a route back into the game, going to sleep defensively and allowing their midfielder, I believe, to get into the box and fire a shot past the helpless Shao Virginia to make it 2-1. But we dominated the game from there. Jay Lynch making a really smart save from close range from Yusuf Chimiti's header. Jack Harrison missed his chance to throw his hat in the ring for goal of the season early on. This spectacular bicycle kick flashing just wide of the post it would have rivaled Beto's overhead kick that won goal of the season last year. Lewis Dobbin was in amongst it all game as well, but he just couldn't quite find a finish. This one he snatched at, rushing the chance as he emerged through on goal. But it was the new boy Asan Dial coming off the bench to secure the victory. He charged down the right-hand side before cutting in onto his left foot and firing a dagger of a shot away to the goalkeeper's right. That's his 82 finishing really proven itself valuable and the stats probably don't even reflect how dominant of a performance this was so we finished the episode having won two out of our three games taking three points in the premier league and advancing to the next round of the carabao cup if we are going to continue this positive start to the season though we need to find a solution to our striker problem sooner rather than later so in the next episode we will of course be conducting the last of our business ahead of the closure of the summer transfer window We'll also be taking on Leeds away at Elland Road and I'll be showing you the highlights of that game. Our featured game though is going to be hosting Aston Villa at Goodison Park. It's going to be the return of Beto and then we'll round out that episode with an away match against Fulham. So we'll look forward to that in the next episode. I hope to see you there. Take it easy.